For me, the desire to switch from carbon fiber to something else started well over two decades ago. Uh, as a technician for our patient care office, I did a lot of work with the carbon AFOs that we were making at the time and would essentially do all of the lamination and set up for them uh, through the morning and then get as many of them ready to, to grind and finish at one time as I could so that I was only itchy at the end of the day and only irritated those last couple hours when I started grinding on that much carbon fiber. Uh, regardless of the suiting up of some sort of hazmat outfit and or lotions that we'd put on our arms before we used it, it was inevitable that you'd be itchy and, and irritated by the carbon fiber, even with the, with the very large an expensive dust collector that we were using. Uh, it, we just couldn't do anything to avoid that itch and irritation. To say nothing of the potential health risks that are there if you're inhaling any of that carbon fiber. So when we were lucky enough to stumble upon basalt and the coyote composite, this was a good switch for us and made a lot of sense for us in a lot of ways. The first being that itch and irritation. But we'd also been making copoly test sockets for a number of years that turned out to be slightly more flexible than we realized when patients began to state that they preferred the fit of the test socket to the definitive socket. And that's when we realized that we needed a little bit more flexible material in our laminations. And this happened to coincide with our discovery of basalt. And so we were able to implement very quickly uh, a more flexible socket which was good for the patient and the grinding uh, and lack of irritation was good for us. Uh, so for us it was a, a major shift in, in materials. We were buying large amounts of carbon. It was, is and still is the, the industry standard for what's used in laminations but we have made a wholesale shift away from carbon fiber for the health reasons for the functionality and the braces and, and laminations that we are making and our prosthetics that we're making. And then the cost savings is also an added benefit. We're, we're getting what we want out of a material and not having to pay more for it and not having to go through extra steps or, or any sort of extra tooling to, to use this material. We were able to make a one-to-one -one switch from braided carbon to the braided basalt or coyote composite. And not really change much in how we laminate or finish those devices. The only thing we really look at now is how the, the lamination is being saturated by the resin. The, the basalt is a little bit different in how it saturates, so if it does sit under vacuum for long periods of time without curing, you can end up starving it, and that's when you end up with those fuzzy edges. But otherwise, a well-saturated lamination will come out extremely smooth and I think even smoother than a carbon finish uh, without having to jump through a bunch of extra hoops or steps to, to make that happen. Uh, for us, it's been an easy switch and I don't know that our technicians would ever want to switch back. Uh, and it's really, you know, we really don't miss carbon fiber at all. We certainly still use it. Uh, we reinforce the distal ends uh, in any area that we want a lot of strength, we'll add carbon tape but we always keep that inside the trim lines so that we're not getting that irritation. Uh, and carbon tape is relatively inexpensive compared to, say, the braid uh, that we used on all of our laminations. So uh, for us, it's been just a really big money saver, uh, irritation saver, and benefit to the patient themselves.